Thank you very much, uh, our peers, National Treasury, our CS, and my elder brother, Honorable John Buddy, our PSs for the National Treasury, and also for planning. Uh, that is the uh, Dr. Kipto and Mr. Muhati, our chair of COG, Madam Anwa Igoro, who is also the governor for Kirinyaga, the distinguished many guests that I see in this hall, and also other visitors. Good morning. Um, I just wish to make very brief uh, comments on this process. But even before I proceed, I first of all want to congratulate my brother on Abu John Badi for being appointed the CS for National Treasury because this is the first time that we are meeting in this kind of process when he is actually not a member of parliament like myself. So, Karibu Sana Waziri. We have met here before, and the previous session we actually met in the Kenya uh, School of Monetary Studies on the initiation of this proce uh, process of budget making. And this process should not be a ritual. It should be an objective, practical process. Because most of what then happens in the year, in the culmination of the CES giving the highlights in the National Assembly, and also the assent of the appropriations bill by the president, the beginning of that journey is actually today. Many times we get people coming at the wee hours of the night, in quotes, in the budget-making process, to come to converse for resources. Unfortunately, it's always very late, because we need to take this process with the weight it deserves, especially at the beginning, other than coming when the process is almost complete, when we get a lot of phone calls with the PS, and of course with the CS, with the accounting officers canvassing for resources. But I also want to give just a few pointers. One, I live in Kenya, yes, and we see that we deserve to do more as leaders. And especially uh, insofar as the Kenyan people are concerned. And that is what we should, we should do more. But looking back, many times it is not, uh, it is not uh, fair for us to engulf ourselves with only doom and gloom because Kenya has been doing well insofar as especially parameters of economies are concerned. Because looking at Kenya and especially the year that is already uh, complete, that is 2023, our GDP grew by a modest 5.6%. Looking globally, Kenya was ranking among the 25th fastest growing economies in the world. And I don't think that is a bad thing, it is a good thing. Secondly, the other parameter, if you look at our currency, and especially for the last uh, one year, uh, that is the current year, and even within this year alone, within this year we have seen our currency gaining close to 20% against the greenback or the US dollar, against the local currencies even more or better. And therefore, I think on that front also, Kenya is not doing so badly. On the other front of inflation, where we measure now the real cost of living, the real cost of living even before I go to the jargons, if you look at the cost of unga, which is our staple food here in Kenya, that is ugali, or maize, where I come from, it is the same plant, or it's the same thing, our unga has come down by almost uh, 50%. And I also think that is a good thing. But even in terms of jargons, our inflation in the month of July was around 4.3%. Our inflation last month, which just closed the month of August, was 4.4%. And our benchmark as Kenya in terms of inflation is 5%. 
and of course with a bad of 2.5% either way. And therefore, we are actually dealing with the lower bad of our inflation because it is below 5%. In fact, if we continue getting the kind of progress we are getting, Waziri, you may now start dealing with a bigger problem of deflation probably in future. And therefore, I'm just trying to say that even when there is a, a push for us to do better, which is uh, very important, we also have to celebrate that Kenya is becoming um, a, a very progressive economy, has come of age, and I'm saying so with humility, and especially based on empirical figures, which are uh, generated here internally, but also acceptable globally uh, by other institutions. The other thing I would just want to say around those figures is that probably what we may need to look at as we uh, uh, look forward is that I should not be coming here as budget chair to convince Kenyans how the economy is growing. It is the Kenyan people who should be telling me the economy is growing. And therefore that calls upon us, all of us in this hall, that all the policies that we make must advance an egalitarian society, must, must promote equality and equity, so that even as the economy grows, it should not, not, not be growing in such a forum. It should be growing in the pockets of the Kenyan people, and I think that is a component of uh, making sure our resources are well distributed. The other thing is about our budget, because that is why we are meeting here. And we can only deal with our budget now with the pointer of the budget we are already implementing of 23-24. Of because that is the budget we are implementing. And I'd want all of us to, to look at this issue very, very uh, um, objectively. The budget we are implementing is a budget of 3.88 trillion shillings. And I'd want us to go together so that the solution may maybe partly come out of this hall. Out of the budget of 3.8 trillion, and that is after the fall of the finance bill, and therefore uh, what followed was the supplementary one, the budget of 3.8 trillion shillings on the, exp on the revenue side, because it's very important, we have 2.6 trillion shillings in ordinary revenue. And we have around 428 billion shillings in A and A, around 51 billion shillings in, in, in expected grants. And if you do the math, you see a hole there of 767 billion Kenya shillings, which is the deficit. But what is the expenditure side? Because that is what 100% of the people here, Waziri, I can guarantee you, never came here because of the revenue side. They came here because of the expenditure side. And especially a PS or an accounting officer, the primary reason they are here is to know ultimately, after the sector working groups, how much am I controlling. But then, in the entirety of it, on the expenditure side, 2.2 trillion shillings is going to national government expenditure, which out of that, around 1.59 trillion shillings is recurrent. And I'm just, not just mentioning these figures, there is a reason. Out of that then, 641 billion shillings is development. 641. 410 billion shillings is the reason why the chair of the COG is here. It is going to our counties as equitable share. Now, the elephant in the room, 1.23 trillion shillings is CFS. Consolidated Fat Service. What is it? Can you imagine, my colleagues, dear Kenyans, out of that 1.23 trillion Kenya shillings, 1.008 trillion is money that is evaporating in the thin air because it is payment of interest rates out of our financial obligations. So even as we come and read a huge budget, it is imperative for us to know that even what we read some of it actually re never reaches the sharing table. It goes into the payments of the expenditure already incurred in previous years. And therefore, as we come here sharpening our knives, as accounting officers, 
on the portion we are going to cut. That is the real situation of our budget making process now. And the unfortunate bit is that, even out of the figures that I've read, 68 billion shillings is actually carryovers. Money that we had to pay last year and never managed to pay. It is actually not entirely, because the entire carryovers were 218 billion Kenya shillings. We are only carrying over this financial year now that we are implementing from last. We, are, we have only carried over 68 billion Kenya shillings. Primarily managed for counties, CDF, and of course pensions. And therefore, that calls for some retrospection. Now, I don't want to belabor the point, but I want to say this because I don't want to, to, to take very long. Waziri, many times the things that divide us as a country, whether in terms of the levels of government or the cross sections of our country, is on how we share resources. One thing that is very divisive in this country is how do we share resources. And that is almost unfolding, by the way, out of the CRA formula uh, on, on equitable share to our counties. But I always think that even as we fight for how we share, the bigger fight should be on how we bake. Our constitution of Kenya, this is a paradox, is very forthright and eloquent about how resources should be shared in a manner that is equitable and in a manner that is to promote uh, growth across our country. But the entire constitution of Kenya has no sentence about the GDP of Kenya. Neither do we have any mention about the revenues of our country. And I keep wondering probably the fabric of our country. Probably we need, therefore, to also look inward that even as we expend our energy on who gets what, probably we are chasing after a rabbit. Maybe we can come together and put our minds together as Kenyans, and probably there is an antelope in the forest that we should go there and get. An antelope which is bigger money, better resources, and therefore everyone gets more. And the reason I'm saying that, Kenya revenue to GDP ratio is 14% only. That with the economy projected of 18 trillion, the money that I have read to uh, the, the ordinary revenue is only a representation of 14% only. But these are complicated figures. Let me bring them home. The same, same revenue to GDP ratio in the economies that are very advanced, like OECD countries, is 34%. But those are far away. Let me come to our continent. South Africa is around 25%. Meaning, if we collected revenue the same way South Africa is collecting, this financial year, we will be collecting 4.5 trillion Kenya shillings as revenue in our country. And therefore, it means we will not be borrowing a single shilling. We will actually be retiring debts previously borrowed. But what is it that makes us therefore not correct? Maybe that's a burden I want to hand over to my brother, the CS. He will tell us. But probably part of the reason is that our economy is hugely um, uh, informal. And therefore, that is some work to be done by the National Treasury and the KRA so that everyone contributes their fair share. That if we were collecting revenue in South Africa, we will be collecting 4.5 trillion Kenya shillings. We will spend all the money we have budgeted for. And Mwisho wa Mwaka, to teach our Kenya Naba Yasimu, to Atumia and Pesa out of our surplus. That is, the, that is the way it is. As I come to the conclusion, I am an optimistic Kenyan, partly because the, the factors within our country, God has favored us greatly because our fiscal policies have worked around agriculture. That is why even our food prices have come down. But I'm also more optimistic with Kenya being part of the global economy. 
And you know, economics, we say there is nothing, there is nothing absolutely true. It depends with the theory that you are looking at. When I see some jitters in the US about an impeding or, or, or um, issues around our, the economy, I don't want to be very brutal, that could happen, and especially triggered by the figures around unemployment rates. An impeding re recession. As a Kenyan, unfortunately, for our brothers in the US, I think I smile. Because part of the reason why we are where we are in Kenya and the global south is because the US got a lot of inflation out of the COVID money. And therefore they have had to raise the Fed rate for so many times, 11 times consecutively. And they are still very rigid to ease up. So when I see some inflation, some recession fears, I am a bit happy myself because a fear of recession can only be handled by lowering interest rates. And when the U.S. Fed lowers interest rates, I think, I think I become happier because when we ease up the monetary policy around the globe and we ease up the monetary policy locally, therefore credit will be more accessible, even government borrowing will be cheaper, and I think we'll be getting out of the situation we are in at a much faster rate. Otherwise, I just want to request, as I conclude, that we must endeavor to implement our budget conclusively. Conclusively, and especially National Treasury, please make sure the budget that we make is not for papers. It is a budget that must be implemented to the letter. When we put in money, for example, for confirmation of teachers who should be confirmed, there should be no much issues around who to do what. Communication should be done so that we deal with the problems, not the problems we are creating for ourselves. When we put in money for roads, let us expedite in releasing that money so that Kenyans, we can offer them services. We transfer the budget from the books to where the Kenyans are. Otherwise, I thank you and may God bless Kenya.